Hi, folks. Welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. That's right. We're back inside tonight or today or tonight. I don't know. I don't even know what date it is. Um, anyways, oh, so much stuff in the news. And so I decided since there's a lot in the news that I was going to do it on the computer here where I can do the little cool split, split screen, you know, make it look like I know what I'm doing. And as many of you probably know that I, I don't. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm certainly not the, the expert or the technical guru when it comes to this stuff. But uh, there's some serious things that's happened over the weekend again. It's always these, these weekends, you know, we get hit with them uh, first day of the week and everyone's like, oh, I had a great weekend. I went out and did some things and we got some things accomplished, had some family time. And then by the end of the first day, you know, or at least Monday, the first work day of the week, we're like, wow, a lot of stuff happened over the weekend and I wasn't really paying attention and this is this isn't very good. Not to be the Debbie Downer, but that is the case again this weekend. So I want to go ahead and jump over to the little splitty screen so that you can see some of this. These are some screenshots of um, different things in the news. This one here, I, I thought this was interesting, ongoing uh, U.S. support to Ukraine could prompt Russian cyber escalation in midterms experts warn it's almost like and i know this is probably airing on the conspiracy side uh, this is almost like they're trying to set up the narrative already so that you know if something doesn't work out the way they wanted it to well see we've been warning you we've been warning you about them doggone russian hackers you know Anyways, uh, moving on, the, the first part of this is, is we're going to talk about war stuff. This one here isn't such a big, big news uh, because it is a regularly scheduled event, but it's interesting that it's all happening at the same time. South Korea kicked off their annual Hoguk Ho defense, whatever that is, uh, defense drills on Monday. I'm sure someone will definitely point it out to me and how wrong I was in pr pronouncing it. Um, to boost their ability to respond to North Korea's missile and uh, nuclear threat. Um, and, you know, it's, it's more things is happening. It's interesting if you, you know, this morning when I woke up and looked at the news, it's like the whole world is kind of preparing themselves for war. Uh, here's another one. Breaking uh, news in Europe. NATO has reportedly begun si simulated nuclear war drills. <clears throat> excuse me. With at least 60 aircraft from 14 different countries, blah, blah, blah. So NATO is trying to show that they're getting ready. Uh, Belarus says that they will conduct live fire exercises with Russia. That whole situation there is, I, I, I kind of wonder if it's got the NATO people a little bit more uh, ruffled up than to begin with. Because when, when this first started coming out in the news a, a week or two or three ago that, that Belarus was going to get involved and that they were going to send you know troops in with, to, to fight with Russia, some of the initial reports that I saw was, oh, you know, at best they could probably do like 4,000 troops. You know, it's not that much. They're, they have, you know, an old army. It's 4,000 troops. Big deal. Well, Belarus is saying that they're sending like 70 thousand troops in now it may not be true and they may be antiquated uh you know technologically but you can't discount an army for that reason alone because uh we spent 20 years fighting uh militias that were very antiquated <laughs> in afghanistan uh and well they've got all of our stuff now and are ruling the country and then here, South Korea expects North Korea to conduct a nuclear test at any time. You know, they have been really, really ramping up uh, their missile tests. And they've been now uh, launching shelling of uh, certain areas that they had agreed to during the previous presidential administration's uh, agreement to not be doing that. And they have violated those agreements. And uh, it, it's possible that in the very near future... Uh, days, hours, weeks, uh, that they could conduct a nuclear test. Uh, here's something from the German Intelligence Services. It's kind of their CIA, KGB. Um, Putin, they, they're saying that Putin wants to declare war on the entire Western democratic world. Um, maybe this is true. Maybe this is, they're just, their stuff that they say that's, you know, to try to ramp up 
emotions and stuff. But it, it honestly, it wouldn't surprise me too much, even though Putin actually isn't the, the most warmongering uh, person in Russia. He's actually considered more of a moderate there. But um, he, there's something that we talk about occasionally on here that, that really one of the things, at least from the Russians' standpoint, is that this isn't just uh, an encroachment upon their borders. This is uh, an encroachment upon their, their culture, their way of life, not just by Ukraine, but by the entire West. If you watch any of the stuff that's put out by Russia, uh, and Putin, uh, any of them, they, they, they go into detail about this Western culture polluting their culture. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that you and I don't really agree with, um, our traditional Russians don't agree with either. They are actually, in, and I'm not supporting Putin at all. I'm not saying what he's doing is great. I'm just saying that uh, typically Russia as a whole has become more traditional values, more family values than, than what America has become. And so uh, this, this de declaration of war on the entire Western democratic world, uh, they may not you know, actually or literally do that, but I think in part that's how they view it, that they are you know, one of the, the last ambassadors of, of you know, traditional family values uh, trying to hold the line. Uh, here's something out of Great Britain. <laughs> We've got winter coming up. I've been saying this for a while. Uh, and, and even though this is an overseas across the pond, uh, it definitely could happen here because we've had, you know, power grid problems throughout the summer. National Grid Chief in Great Britain, as execu uh, executive, has warned British households to prepare for blackouts from between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. on really cold days. So when it's the worst, expect to have your power shut off. Um there's no reason to believe that this could not happen here okay because many of you have experienced blackouts throughout the summer and with with all the you know the refineries and the pipelines and it on and on and on you know and very potential uh, railroad strikes uh, in the near future there's 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 a very real reality that uh, utilities this winter could be extremely bad, extremely expensive, hard to get, rare, uh, and and very possibly rationed. So, man, I've been telling you tonight, uh, most of you, well, many of you, especially in the Midwest and stuff, we're going to be experiencing some really cold weather. Wet, blah, 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 weather <laughs> uh, down in the twenties. I think I'm going to fire up the fireplace for the first time for the season. Uh, we've we've been fighting it, or at least I have been. My family, they I mean I love the fireplace too. But um they have really been wanting it and to for me to light it up and I have been just cuz I'm just a mean cruel taskmaster and I've been making them suffer. No, actually we have a small little um a little little space heater that that does a pretty good job our our house is very very well insulated i made sure of that and so it actually doesn't take too much to heat it as long as it's not into like the 30s you know if it's at 50 between the 30s and the between the you know upper 30s and 50s at night it, it'll be do fine um microphone looks like it's coming through a little hot i apologize for that so anyway so we're going to be uh, probably firing up. I'm preparing to fire up the fireplace tonight, the, the wood stove. And, it, it, you know, there's a good chance we're going to have a cold winter and a lot of problems due to that. So we need to be aware of that. Let's move on to a few other things here. And this is, we're going to just kind of get all mixed up here. I mean, I know, once lots of advertisements. This is out of the Daily Mail. Uh, and I want to... <laughs> This is playing with fire, it says, could spark a lab-generated pandemic. Experts slam Boston Lab, where scientists have created a new deadly COVID strain with an 80% kill rate. I mean, this is the gain-of-function fun stuff right here that they're doing here on our own soil. Uh, but, you know, it's okay. That's, that's normal. Um, they have apparently taken or created a new COVID strain that has an 80% kill rate, folks. Um, this last one, at best, was what, 3 maybe 4%? 
Um, I mean, that, that's, that's using their numbers. Probably less when you break it down and you actually figure out the ones that actually truly perished from it. 80%, um, even like the Black Plague, Black Death, and all that wasn't anywhere near 80%. That's like completely throwing us back to the Stone Age kind. So uh, does this mean that this is what we have to face in the future? No, not necessarily. Uh, it would certainly fulfill their plans for depopulization. <clears throat> but uh, it shows that they're still messing around with this stuff. They always are. They, they most likely always will be. And the, uh, the odds of something else slipping through the, their, their fingers and getting out to the public, I think, are just as good as the odds of the last one that got out in the public. Anyways, uh, this is not good news at all. Um, there's been a lot of stuff, and I've talked about Saudi Arabia here lately, uh, and how you know they basically thumbed their nose at Biden, uh, and he kind of went on his knees begging, and they still thumbed their nose, and and I kind of suspected this is was was what was in the future. Saudi Arabia is wanting to join BRICS. <clears throat> For let me give you a really quick. Try not to take too much time. Let me give you a little little quick thing refresher here because some of you don't know this. The reason why Saudi Arabia is such a big deal, they're kind of the, the world's controller, in so to speak, of oil and oil prices. Uh, they're kind of, they lead OPEC. And the whole deal was, is that back in the, the, the 70s, we went to Saudi Arabia and we said, listen, if you only use the U.S. dollar and you require all of your business partners, anyone that purchases oil from you to only use the U.S. dollar, then we will protect you. We will, you know, if, if Iran or anyone else tries to do anything, we will protect you. And that's why, that's why on 9-11, after 9-11, we, we left Saudi Arabia alone, even though the, the, the people on the plane, um, they were all from Saudi Arabia. You, <laughs> anyone, anyone ever think of that? Of course you did. Um, because we're buddies with them and we didn't want to tick them off. Well, basically, Saudi Arabia has said we've had enough of America, uh, and there's various reasons. And they're buddying up with China. And they're buddying up with Russia. They've created OPEC Plus, allowing Russia to be part of that. And now they're they're going thinking about joining BRICS. Well, BRICS, of course, is becoming the the NATO and Western alternative, and they're trying to develop their own currency that is based on either is or based on the Chinese uh, currency. If that happens, the odds are. Saudi Arabia is not going to be having anything to do with the U.S. dollar, or at least not forcing it. And that's one of the very few things that gives our currency any value whatsoever, because it has no intrinsic value. It's just, it's just paper. It costs more to print it you know, than, than what it's actually worth. Oh, here we go. With all this talk of, of nuclear war and everything, and people are just kind of oblivious to it, West makes plans to avoid pandemic if Russia uses a nuclear bomb. Here's another one where they're trying to establish the narrative. You know, it's it's not that big a deal. We've got it under control. All the while, I think that they do want kind of a panic. They would love. They I, I think, personally, that there are certain people in this country, and I'm not going to name any names because YouTube would probably be very upset with me, but I'd say that there's probably a few people that would enjoy Putin doing something, something, so that they could do something here uh, to cause people to have to stay home. Um, but that's just my opinion. This next one is big, very big. <sighs> yes, uh, in case you haven't heard that uh, the United States, Biden has issued a new sanction on China. And the sanction is, is that, um, well, we, we, we're not buying their, their microchips anymore. Uh, we've hampered their ability to produce microchips. Any uh, American or someone wanting to be an American or working with a green card uh, from America cannot work with China on microchips that you could actually lose your citizenship. Uh, they've been pressuring other countries to not have anything to do with China's microchip. And a lot of top companies have just overnight, over the weekend, have, have started leaving China because of this. This, if we were not in, a, in an economic cold war before, we are most definitely in one now with China. This is, 
this is very serious. I'm not I'm not complaining that this was done. I'm just letting you know the seriousness of this. Um, a lot. I mean, I could go. I could make an entire video on how this will <clears throat> nearly destroy China's ability to make you know high tech weaponry, um, to to just make you know supercomputers, uh, all the the big stuff. They this this basically takes that away from them. They you know they know that they're going to have a really hard time. Let's put it that way. They're going to have a really hard time of making some of the high end microchips just for their own use because of this and uh, I th I wouldn't doubt if there'd be some kind of retaliation and then lastly on this uh, we've got some recession news you know how we're told it's fine remember the other day uh, Joe Biden has, I think there was a picture on this article let me scroll down hopefully there's nothing inappropriate because he here we go here we go yeah see Biden he's sitting there he's he's eating his ice cream and he says it's a it's as strong as hell yeah yeah well, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice. Um, the previous probability of us being in recession was 65%. It's now 100% probability. 100% probability that we will be in a recession within the next 12 months. Now, I talked about this just briefly the other day. They have been just beaten, beaten, beaten their heads uh, over the head in the last week or so that you know this recession fear recession is coming next year it's going to be a really really bad recession really bad recession and all the rest of us are sitting around going we've been in a recession for probably six months now or more i mean even the the two negative quarters of gdp you know, popped up because I was saying that we were in a recession before that. I remember having people on the comments saying, oh, it's not a recession yet. You have to have two negative quarters of GDP. Well, we finally get that. And I said, you know, we're having a recession on Wall Street. I mean, on, on Main Street. Uh, that's that's where it's at. The recession is where us, you know, the little common, you know, uh, little peasants, we feel the recession because we have less buying power with our money. We have less money and less buying power. Uh, and, and a lot of people are financially hurting. V virtually everyone's feeling it. So we've all, if we've already had a recession going on for months now, then what are they talking about this really bad recession? Maybe they're saying that kind of in the same way that they didn't want to admit that there was a recession, that they don't want to admit that there's a depression. So instead of calling it that and getting people really scared, they're just going to say it's a really bad recession because we've been in a recession for months and they're telling us it's not. So if we're if then the next step is is our most likely conclusion logical conclusion is is that if they're they're going to tell us now oh now we're going to get and it's going to be really really bad it's most likely going to actually be a depression that we're we're about ready to face um, so folks get ready for that I want to show you this video here um, hopefully this doesn't get me in trouble with with YouTube they don't like me showing videos. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's the file name. So this here, this was just a few days ago. Uh, this was the this is the UN uh, United Nations World uh, Food Program Director. Okay, United Nations World Food Program Director, um, and it's it's only a minute long, so stick with me, and uh, I just want to let it play. I have said very clearly, and many of you have too, that we were worried about 2022 being the worst humanitarian year since World War II, and we were saying this before Ukraine. And now I'm worried that 2023 will be a food availability problem. A world population, as, as Chu said, 8 billion people. 50% of the production of food worldwide is because of fertilizers. And we've got a fertilizer crisis. If we don't have fertilizers, we're talking about 8 billion people struggling and what we saw in 2007 and 8 and in the arab spring 48 nations destabilizing political unrest riots and protests and the economic factors today are much 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 worse we've got to move fertilizers around the world otherwise we will have a food availability problem in 2023 and it will be hell on earth all right so, yeah, things aren't going to get any better anytime too soon. Folks, uh, this is not something to, to get ourselves all upset about. 
This is not something to, to be so terrified and worried about things that are happening. I was talking to my mother today about this. Um, and, of course, you know, she expressed sadness that there are people in her lives, family members, loved ones, that are just not waking up to this. And I think probably everyone watching this channel could say that. If you if you don't have any friends or loved ones, either you don't have any friends or loved ones, or you've done an amazing job, which is very rare. Uh, the fact is, is that we all have friends and loved ones that are, are not awake to all this. And it's very possible that they won't wake up to all of this. We, we keep praying for them. We keep trying to, you know, wake them up. But we can't allow it to get us down. We have to keep pushing forward, keep preparing, because... Um, uh, Things are, are starting to really unravel, uh, and I don't think that it's I, I don't think it's going to take a, a slowdown or a pause anytime too soon, folks. Uh, folks, it is now more than ever time to get your houses in order, to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.